what is the difference between innovation work and work with your core business? And why is it really important to make this distinction? Well, I want you to think about a well-established company that you know. Let's say that they are making screwdrivers. This company is specialized in making screwdrivers and they have been doing so for about 20 years. This means that their processes and structures and organization is perfectly streamlined and optimized towards selling screwdrivers. And that's awesome because that is what, what's making them their money today. However, say that this company feels that they have to renew themselves and they have to work with innovation. How are they going to do that in the processes and structures that are well adapted for just producing screwdrivers? So what characterizes our core business is really that we're doing something that we have probably been doing before. So in this case, we are developing screwdrivers that we want to sell to our customers. So we have a known end goal. And having a known end goal makes everything so much easier. And since we have been doing this for 20 years, we kind of know what we are supposed to be doing. And we can just repeat what we have been doing before with slight improvements. And that also means that it's going to be easier for us to predict the effect. So the predictability goes up. And because of that, it's also going to be easier for us to plan our projects because we can just take our known end goal and break it down into pieces and create project plans. And when we have project plans and we can compare our work to something that we have been doing before, it's going to feel good because we can check things off and we're going to know that we are achieving a goal that we have set up. And that's going to feel good for everyone. And we're going to feel safe in investing way larger than we're doing in certain projects. And that also means that we can speed up the projects and we can be happy with what they are doing. Since we can break down the projects, we can also divide what we're going to do into blocks, which different people can uh, perform. And that means that we can have blocks with experts in them, developing things that we can attach together and receive a perfect result. So we can have experts working in our teams and do things on a very high expert level. And that's also going to be feeling very, very good. And as we can repeat things we have been doing before, it's predictable. We can make project plans and we can invest largely without feeling a high risk. And we can have experts working in these projects. The risk is going to be really low. So this is what characterizes our core business project. So what characterizes an innovation project instead then? Well, when we're doing innovation, it's new and it's valuable. And as it is new, we don't really have a known end goal because the entire point of developing innovation project is basically, basically to find that concrete end goal, the value that we want to deliver. So we have an unknown end goal, which makes everything much more difficult, right? We cannot repeat anything because everything is completely new. So we have to do things for the first time. And because of that, this is going to be completely unpredictable. At least to some degree. And that means that making project plans is going to be really, really difficult. Instead, we have to have a trial and error approach. And that also means that we cannot really invest largely in innovation projects because we don't know what the end goal is. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what RI we're going to have. So we have to start small. And it's also going to be difficult to have experts come in and work because as we don't really know exactly what we're going to do, their competence is probably going to be really difficult to use. We rather need people who can switch between competences and switch between abstraction levels and take something that is very, very unconcrete and make it concrete. So we need some, some people that are very flexible. And the risk for this is of course going to be high. But really the option is not driving innovation at all. And the risk of that is even bigger because that risks making up obsolete in the future. So what are the conclusions on this then? Well, I have three points to make and they concern structure, having projects compete with each other, 
and conditions for projects. And first of all, as these projects are so different, we can't have them measured, we can't have them uh, planned, we can't have them structured in the same way. They just need different things and they have so different conditions from the start. Also, we cannot have them compete with each other. Having a low risk project compete with a high risk innovation project is likely to mean that the innovation project is not going to get any funding. And that's going to terminate all innovation efforts. So that's why it's very important to make the distinction between them. Also, lastly, making this distinction allows us to give them different conditions, giving them the structures and the measurements and the planning that they need, and giving them the chance to compete on their own terms. So therefore, we need to establish the right type of conditions for these types of projects. Finally, one last thing, never forget that you need both, because you need to make money both now and in the future. So use both and utilize both and value both.